Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Let's go back in time. Edmonton was founded as a fur trading fort by the Hudson's Bay Company and first explored in 1754 by Anthony Henday. With an established route on the North Saskatchewan River, Edmonton soon grew into a bustling city, and with the arrival of the train in 1905, things really started to take off. All over North America, Edmonton included, small general stores popped up to serve their community. You could buy anything from nails to bread. These stores were the life of the neighborhood. Sadly, with progress, many of these shops were lost in the 1970s and 80s, and as a result, can be very difficult to find now. I've been on the search for a historic building for our store, and guess what happened this week? Well, hey everyone, and welcome to today's episode. It's been a long time coming, but guess what? I bought a general store. So, this is the kickoff series. This is the beginning. This is the number one of a new series where we get busy converting this general store back into a proper retail space. Now, it has been um, sitting for quite a, a while. It's been used as a studio. The previous owners have done some work, but I'm gonna give you a tour and show you what we have to work with as we work on renovating and converting this building back into its former glory and back into a 100-year-old building. It's gonna be amazing. You gotta follow along. Built in 1913, this building is nestled in the city's west end, just near downtown, in a trendy area called Westmount. It's situated on a little block, nice tree-lined street. Right across from me is a community hall, nice little park, and really just kind of a pleasant place to be. We chose this location, one, because it's a historic area. There's lots of historic buildings around, nice homes. Uh, it's an up-and-coming area, but also it's the right kind of building. This space was originally a uh, pool hall and barber shop and then converted into a general store shortly after. We're going to go walk around and have a look and kind of do a condition report of what it's like. But let's go inside the front doors and see what it looks like inside. And I'm wearing my general store proprietor gear today. I've got the bow tie, I've got my hat. So uh, let's go inside and uh, see what the inside looks like. Oh well, look, it comes with my children already equipped and in place. So we have the previous owners, Jamie and Brenda. So how long have you guys had the place for? We've had it for 15 years. 15 years, and it wasn't like this when you got it. Uh, no, no it had had uh, decades of rebuilding inside, you know, carpet on top of tile, there was a drop ceiling, all that sort of pin board kind of stuff that, you know, you put hooks on. Oh yeah. The entire walls were like that. Yeah, so we reno renovated, but we just really focused on the historical building um, and brought this up to uh, a usable standard. And my father lived here for quite a few years. I guess for over, over six, six, six and a half years. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say seven, but yeah, about six and a half. Okay. Um, and then Jamie's been using it as a rehearsal space. What a spoiled guy. I've been able to have wonderful rehearsals here. We've had some wonderful house concerts here, and it's been a guest home for family and friends. And uh, wow, it's been really wonderful. Yeah, Jay's parents are um, getting up in age and they like to come up to Edmonton for uh, music performances. So they're they, they coming stay today, they're staying stay here tonight. tonight. They are, too, one yeah, of the last visits. They love it, it's like it. Yeah, they really have enjoyed having their own little space, you know? Well, it really is a beautiful space, and I'll have to do a little tour as we walk around here and show people just what a nice job you've done of the interior. This is a lot different than the last space I bought that was a heritage building. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, well, she she definitely made good use of her square footage in here, didn't she? Yes. Now let's, now let's. <laughs> I can see I don't have as much stuff to worry about moving out already, so that's a big plus. Um, <laughs> but And you're a musician as well. Yes, it's true. I'm a musician. You have a website too, do you not? Um, yes, jamiefilt.net. Okay, we're going to have to check that out. I'll put a little sure. link in there too, so you can <laughs> check it out. Thanks, Alex. We found this space originally. Well, actually, Jamie reached out to us mm -hmm. is what happened. We had posted on Facebook, I think it was, and perhaps what we've been talking about a lot on YouTube, that we were looking for a general store because we have an antique store and all the stuff we sell is historic or unique. And it was probably about time that we had a building that suited what we do for business. Um, so Jamie approached us and said, hey, I've got a space we might look at selling. And now uh, 
it's uh, been a long road to get here and, and challenging, but it's all come together. And now we're gonna have the store uh, very, very soon. And what do you think about it so far? I think it's exciting. This is probably the best shape of anything that Alexander's home. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Um, this part anyhow, but we're going to have a look around. There is a, a, some renovation to do. There's some major redecorating we're going to do. Uh, but let me give you the tour and show you what we have to work with. The one really nice thing about this space is it does have high ceilings. The ceilings are about 10 feet tall. Now, originally there would have been shelves that ran along the walls and probably some showcases. In fact, we have some historic photos of the building when it was in use and it was an actual soda fountain. In fact, the neighborhood kids at one point, as a practical joke, painted a crosswalk straight across because there was the schools just down the way. And apparently if the teacher couldn't find the kids, he would just walk down here and drag them out back to school because he knew they were probably here getting a milkshake or a soda. Uh, so lots of fun history in the neighborhood and I'm so glad the building actually still exists because a lot of these places get torn down. And the previous owners have done a fantastic job with maintaining the architecture. So we've got the nice wood trimmed windows, the bay windows are still there, um, the doors is modern. So really what I'm gonna be doing is looking at trying to find a way to add fixturing, uh, maybe put a tin ceiling in, uh, antique the lights a bit, um, paint out the wall so it matches the other colors in the room here. Uh, they wouldn't have done feature walls back then. But as you can see, there's a lot of good and a lot of potential here. And uh, hardwood floors are in beautiful shape. So really, a lot of wonderful work has been done and makes it very easy for us. The one challenge is the space isn't really a whole lot bigger than what we have right now. In fact, um, until the back addition is built, it's actually smaller. But we're gonna do a little walk-see. I have a plan for it and I'll show you why. Now that's a hatch that goes down to the basement. There's not too much to see down there little secret staircase and then that's where the furnace and stuff is it's not uh not a whole lot going on down there but i thought i'd one of these days we'll do the full walk through in a separate video and i'll show you what's down in the basement but you can see it has a nice little bathroom and i guess if i uh get myself in trouble with the missus i've got a full shower and a sink and everything going on in here um, so you know it is a usable livable space there's a nice little kitchen. In terms of retail space, I probably will use this to display, um, we'll probably use it as a staff kitchen, but also display antique tins up top and other sorts of things. Nice stained glass fixtures. And look, everybody who said that you should have a window over your sink at the potter's house, well look, there's a window over the sink. Really, not as much to do in terms of renovation, you know, maybe find a way to uh, clean up the electrical panel, the looks of that. Um, there's another little room back here, which we'll have to figure out, uh, you know, what's going to go in here. Maybe a little office or who knows what. If you notice something, and we're going to get to that, there's a little patch on the floor. Now that's usually where your doorway would go through, through so your wet feet don't get your shoes, uh, or your shoes don't get the, the water from your feet all over the floor and wreck the wood. That's because there used to be a door and there's a whole addition on the other side of the building and that's where there's gonna be a whole bunch of work right off the bat. The other beautiful thing about the property is it has a nice big yard. For future expansion, these trees have been here for ages and this was never developed. In fact, I thought when I first saw this that there must have been another building here at one point that got knocked down, but in, the truth is the people that own this building had always kept this as a yard for their family. So one thing I don't have in my current store is a yard and I envision don't ask me why. I'm sure much to Melissa's chagrin, I imagine old Model T cars parked here. Um, you know, like maybe a cool little building. Ah, <laughs> Ooh, it's gonna be really neat. There's so much potential for what we can do in this space, more than we had before at the other store. Uh, Melissa, do you wanna come and see the addition? You've never seen it. Melissa's not seen the addition because it's the one spot that needs, let's just say a little TLC. Okay, so back in the old days, People would have their store at the front and then they would live in the back. And so behind this big tree here is an addition, which was at one point the residence for the store. Now there's been no um, effort or much effort at all put into renovating or maintaining this space. This is gonna be where we need Josh, Dakota, Hans, all the guys to come back and rebuild this space on the back here. Yeah, Cause so, I think the whole thing was for it to be torn down, right? Um, at some point? Originally, we talked about tearing it down, but now we're thinking we're going to try and save it. Um, the roof in this area 
is still good. You know, we haven't had any water in here. Got that 1970s sort of paneling all over the place. But the mission, I think, with this is that we would knock out all these walls, open it up to one nice big room. And really, this is the size of probably like a, you know, like a triple car garage once these walls are out. And that's enough room to park some motorcycles or put pinball machines. And that's where I want to put all the man cave stuff is back here. The original garage is still here. Now, we don't have much for parking out front. There is street parking, but we're thinking about turning this little back patch here into a little uh, parking pad so we can probably put, you know, three, four cars across the back there um, for customers, which means I'm going to have to take that fence out so people can access it from the alley. And I'll have, probably have to talk to Hens about removing that tree because it's kind of in the way right now. As much as I hate taking trees down, unless we can uh, gravel it and people drive in a little bit. We'll talk about that later. Future problems for future Alex. But there you can see the addition on the back. Can you believe this is actually happening? Yeah, I knew it would happen. <laughs> and so this area has been developed in the last hundred years. Obviously what's happened is other things have happened. There used to be a beautiful old house that was next door with big columns on it. That got knocked down. They put up an apartment building. But one challenge is, is that the grading is higher. See how it's built up probably about two feet higher than, than my building? Well, all their water is running down towards mine, which is creating an issue in the basement where water is getting in, in heavy rain. Um, not so much on the other side. They built up, but the, it actually slopes down. So we're gonna have to try and figure out exactly what to do to fix the grading on that side. We'll probably have to slope it or angle it so it creates a trough down the middle. Uh, that's gonna be one of the big things that has to get done right away. I know, the the gutters are not in the right spot. Our grade kind of goes down a little bit here. It's the other side is really bad, so we're gonna have to get that fixed. So can you imagine it, guys? Imagine nice old wooden shelves in here, showcases, uh, push bar on the door, maybe a tin ceiling up on the roof. Lots of potential. And this is gonna be a much more interesting space than what we have right now. I'm excited for this journey to start. You guys should be excited to watch because it's gonna be so much fun. But now I'm going to do some research on what the heck an old general store actually looks like. And the sides of the building would have originally had advertising, either big metal signs or painted advertising. So I have to come up with a plan on what we're going to do for a store sign and what we're going to do to make the front and the sides of the building look historically correct. And of course, here is the big empty lot that uh, also comes with the property that's wide enough to actually put a whole other building on. And uh, yeah, I've got pictures of this space and there was I think a tobacco or a cigarette ad painted there and kids playing in the yard with their soapbox derby cars. Really, really neat space. So although I won't be on the main stretch here, I will be just about a block and a half over from all this great stuff, including one of my favorite bakeries, Duchess, which could be potentially dangerous. So when you're building a historic general store, you have to kind of get an idea about what they should look like. So we've come to the Ukrainian Cultural Center just outside of Edmonton where they have a recreated town that has the old fashioned general store inside of it. We're gonna go check that out, have a look around and get some ideas for this business. Why is there a Ukrainian cultural village just outside of Edmonton? Well, around the turn of the century, many Ukrainian people came to Canada as they pretty much just scattered out of the Ukraine uh, with all sorts of activities and upheaval that was happening prior to World War I. Uh, my family as well um, left around that time. My great-great-grandfather uh, perished sadly uh, in the First World War. And my great-grandmother, um, she was uh, born here in Canada and uh, was of Ukrainian descent. And so she would know all these uh, expressions and sayings in Ukrainian. I don't know much at all uh, other than Dujadavra and Pedehe and all the good things that you learned growing up around here. Uh, but we're gonna explore and the kids will learn a little bit about their heritage. So what they have is basically like a little town sort of built up and inside these buildings likely there's role players. This gentleman back there who looks like he's scratching his horse's bottom. <laughs> and here come Melissa and Steven. One thing to note is that they would oftentimes paint their advertising right on the front of the building. Uh, they had an expression for what these guys were called. I think they were like Wallies or something like that. The guys that did this professionally. We'll go down that way too. Let's check out the old gas station. I can't help but look at buildings like this and want to buy the old signs that are on the side or the old pumps. 
Let's go check this place out. See the big, long counter, just like what I pulled out of the general store at our end. That it wouldn't have taken much to build it, but it's original. Do you know flush toilet? Pardon? You know, you said, whoa, you know flush toilet? Yes. So, and you know when you pull the chain from the tank and the water all rushes down to flush it. That's normal for you, but for her, she had never seen this before. So she pulled it and all of the water rushed. Oh. <laughs> There's a nice old stove right in the middle of the room too. Is it uh, enough to keep you warm? Well, just just for the day. Right, so it will heat at the store in the winter for the day, but in the back there, we have the, the stove for the cooking. Okay, so this is just to keep you warm during this, the day. This is just for, for Maybe a bit of cold right before you go to bed, so it's not too, too fresh in the morning. Next up, we're gonna check out the little grocery store. And it is just that, it's little. Let's go inside and see how they've got it. Hello, pretty good. We came to see what you had for sale in the old, in the grocery store here. In the old, what do you mean the old? <laughs> You're working on violins too, are you? I am, yes. It's just, uh, he, he's missing some parts, so I'm replacing. The nut is gone, so I made the new nut. The, uh, the piece where the tail piece will fit over top of, that was missing, so I made a new one. Oh, very skilled. Uh, do you play violin? I do, yes. Ah. Not this one. Well, I don't know about the fixtures, but it seems like every time we go in one of these old buildings, there's a role player in it or somebody from the past. So maybe I'll have to dress up like an old fashioned person and wear that bow tie and hat like all the time when people come shop at the store. Maybe that'll be my new thing. If I'll get really into character and when people have a phone, I'll just like, I'll go crazy. Like, whoa, <laughs> what is that thing that you're holding? Starts That's like insane. Stones. <laughs> yeah, just even says that people would be stoned and they'd call you a witch probably. <laughs> And this isn't actually a stucco building, it's mud and straw, which is packed on top of logs, and then they painted it. But probably did the trick. Would have had to, uh, probably been a lot of upkeep, I would think. Especially if you had goats get near your house and eat half the thing. The architecture seems to be getting a little bit more, let's say, rustic around here. That's kind of cool, though. You want a house? Dig yourself a hole and cover it in dirt. It's like a little Ukrainian hobbit house. Okay, so what does it look like in here? There's people like everywhere hiding inside the buildings. <laughs> I guess doing their daily routines, but still. Inside the 100 year old hotel, and I'm kind of getting some ideas of paint colors and how they did stuff. They would just run a piece of trim along the wall and then paint the top a different color than the bottom. So it kind of had that look of wainscoting. Might be an idea or a trick we could use inside the store. Inside the station. But you have a good foundation in typing, better than most that I've seen. I used to. Oh All right, well, the next stop. Are you pH? Yeah. Steven? Sorry, my. One easy solution for the derelict addition that's on the side of my place is to do something kind of like this. Make it more or less an old-fashioned barn, which means you're just putting some wooden siding on, even leaving an open beam. Um, it would be very difficult to heat, so it might have to be sort of a cold storage area, but it could be a cool spot to store things. Um, good to get some inspiration from some places like this to see how they would look back in the old days. Really like how they've got the planks, oiled planks on the side of the wall wooden floor. These are all great possible decorating ideas when you're building a neat little addition off the side. Peaked wooden ceiling. Little shelves. I like the feeling of this space. Some spaces just feel very comfortable to be in and when you're surrounded by so much wood 
Um, it's very warm and inviting, and I always love uh, wooden plank floors. Maybe there's something creative like this I can do with our space too. Food for thought. So that's it, it's official. This is the start of the new series and it couldn't have come at a better time because my garage is getting completely filled up with shelves and showcases and stuff. Uh, you can't even really see that there's a little Isetta hidden back there. The stuff's gotta go. And very soon I'll be able to start putting some of these things inside the new building. Now I don't take possession for a little while so you might not see an update video for a couple weeks or so. But the exciting news is here. We got the space and the new series can begin. Watch as we transform this historic building back in time to the way it would have been about 100 years ago with original style fixtures and counters and products. It's gonna be amazing. It incorporates some art. We're gonna get our friends back involved with the project. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, and follow along as we renovate a general store.